of gases and volatiles liquids lab. It is lab number three um, in the Flynn Chemfax AP lab series. Um, since I'm not going to be here tomorrow, you guys are not going to be able to do part one. Um, so we are only going to do part two of this particular lab, um, which is the molar mass of volatile liquid part. We're not going to be able to do the molar mass of gas sample. Super sorry about that, but I know that you guys understand. Um, so just coming to the pre-lab questions. Um, the first question gave us this data, told us that the mass of our empty syringe was this, and then said that we needed to assume that air was 79% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and 1% argon. Um, and also we are to assume that all of these gases are acting as ideal, and for the most part they kind of do. Um, so this was the data that we got from the air. This was all of our data that we know from the oxygen. And so to determine the uh, theoretical molar mass of the air, we're going to assume that these percentages over here represent the mole fraction of each gas in our solution of air. So the first thing that we need to do <coughs> is... Um, figure out the mass of the gas over the mass of oxygen. And so that's this little section right here, real simple. Here's the mass of the gas, here's the mass of oxygen. So we take that and figure it out. So the first part of doing this is filling in, sorry my pen got stuck, this little section of the table. So that's 0 0.054 divided by 0 0.060 which uh, we are allowed two sig figs, and this uh, works out to 0 0.90. So go ahead and plug that in right there. And the units cancel out. This is just a ratio of gas to, <laughs> you gotta love that. Sorry about that, had a little typo there. Uh, this is just a ratio basically of gas to oxygen, of how they um, compare. And so using that to find the experimental molar mass of our gas, this is our fraction, our mole fraction of air to oxygen. And since oxygen has a molar mass of 32 grams per mole, we're going to take that and multiply it by the mole fraction. Because if you remember, the mole fraction is just simply, uh, if we want to keep the units there, grams of air, we'll say grams of air, to grams of O2, and we are going to multiply that by 32.00 grams of O2 per one mole. So my grams are going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with grams of air per mole which is molar mass. So you take 0.9, multiply it by 32, and in correct sig figs, you get 29 grams per mole. So that's gonna go right there. And then for the theoretical molar mass, we're going to use these percentages and multiply them by the corresponding molar masses. Really similar to how you would figure out the <coughs> Um, average molar mass of something where you would use the percentages of the isotopes and then the, the um, atomic masses of those isotopes to figure out the average atomic mass. Um, we're going to do the exact same thing here. So we're going to take the 0 0.79 of the nitrogen and multiply it by the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 28.02. We're going to add to that the 20% that is oxygen and multiplying that by 32. And then we're going to add to that the 0.01% that, or sorry, it's not 0.01%, it's 1%, which is 0.01, um, part that is argon, and argon has a molar mass of 39.95. And then you plug all that in, <coughs> calculate it out, and oh, big shocker of the day, we get 29 grams per mole. So, yay, this data rocks. Big shocker there. Flynn's very good with their data. So um, that would be the completion of pre-lab question number one. And so now we're going to move on to question number two. And I totally feel like a chef on one of those TVs. I'm just going to magically pull up the completed table for question number two. <laughs> You know how on cooking channels they like just magically pull out the completed casserole from the oven and it's warm and steaming and delicious and you know, whatever. Okay, anyways, 
So question number two asks us, it says a determination of the molar mass of methyl alcohol. And they give us the formula for methyl alcohol, CH3OH, methyl referring to the fact that it only has one carbon in it, um, yielded the following data. And so here is our data and then just some additional information that, we, that they thought might be pertinent. Um, the temperature of our boiling water bath was 99.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, the barometric pressure at the time, uh, I'm going to put bare, uh, air. <laughs> the air pressure is 738 millimeters of mercury. And then the temperature of the room temperature water bath, so this is the hot water bath, and the temperature of the room water bath. <coughs> Sorry about that. 24 degrees Celsius. And the density of water at this temperature is really close to one, as it should be. And this units on this, of course, are grams per milliliter. Not sure how much of this information we're going to need to answer these questions, but we'll see. So using the data, fill in the rest of the table. <clears throat> Calculate the molar mass of methyl alcohol using equation three from your pre-lab. I'm sorry, not your pre-lab, from your... I guess it is pre-lab reading, um, and compare this value to the actual molar mass of methyl alcohol, which we can calculate pretty easily using the periodic table. Uh, keep in mind that the volume of the pipette is equal to the volume of the water that is in the pipette, and use the relationship of mass and density to determine this volume. So once the volume of the pipette has been determined, equation three in the background section can be used to calculate the molar mass of the methyl alcohol. So let's go ahead and get this potty started. So first of all, we need to know the mass of the condensed methyl alcohol. We'll come up here in our measurements and we see condensed methyl alcohol here, but it's with the pipette. So we need to go ahead and subtract out Oh, I didn't mean to like cross through it, but subtract out the mass of the empty pipette. So we're going to take 1.571 and subtract 1.557. By the way, this and uh, question number two corresponds to part two in your lab. So these are very, very similar um, calculations that you are going to be doing in your lab. And so this works out to point. 0, 0.014 grams. I'm going to plug that in right here. 0, 0.014 grams. And then just because I feel like it, I'm going to switch some colors. Mass of the water in the filled pipette. Well, again, come back up to the data that we collected. Mass of the pipette and water. Well, there's the water. Got to subtract out that pipette again. So we're going to take 16.001 and subtract the mass of the pipette. And this works out to 14 point, lots of fours. And remember, when you're subtracting numbers for sig figs, because I know you're probably going, hey, wait a minute, that's five sig figs, and this number only has one sig fig. Remember, when you're adding and subtracting, you only look at the number of sig figs after the decimal. Uh, because of the measuring devices that we will use in class tomorrow, we won't be able to have this many decimal places. We'll only be able to have two decimal places. But that still gives us a good number of sig figs. And so this was the mass of water that we used, 14.444 grams. And then to find the volume of water, they gave us the density right here in grams per milliliter. We now have mass of water, so we can pretty easily convert this to milliliters. Um, we would say 14.444 grams. And for every 0.9973 grams, we're going to have one milliliter of water. And this works out to slightly less fours, 14.483 milliliters. Um, actually, ha, that's only four sig figs. So 14.48 grams. And then uh, the molar mass of the methyl, methyl alcohol experimental. The way that you figure that out <coughs> is you use the equation, um, equation three from your pre-lab reading, which is pivomert, basically, because the, here, write that down. Let me use another color, oh, purple. 
Piv um, Mert. And the reason that we can use this is because the procedure is actually going to have you guys heating the gas, heating the volatile liquid. Methanol is a volatile liquid. It just means it evaporates easily. We're going to heat it to the point that it's a gas. And we're going to heat it to the point that all of the liquid methanol is actually out of the pipette. And of course, the big assumption that we are making is that it is only methanol in the pipette. Uh, and that, you know, none of it has escaped and, you know, there's not a vacuum being formed or any air being sucked back in or anything. It's a reasonable assumption to make. Uh, and so because it is all a gas, we do get to use the ideal gas law. Um, so our pressure was right here, 738 millimeters of mercury. But because we are using R, we can't have this be 738. We have to convert it into um, atmospheres. And so in atmospheres, sorry, I'm not prepared, uh, 738 divided by 760 gives us, this actually equals 0 0.971 atmospheres. And we um, are not allowed to have uh, degrees Celsius. And since this was... Um, the methyl alcohol was kept in the boiling water bath. We can assume that the methanol is at this hot temperature. So you take 273 and add 99.5, and you get 372.5. And actually, you know what? If you want to be able to have that decimal, you need to do 273.15 plus 99.5. And now we can have 372.7. Uh, Kelvin. And let's see, I think that should be, oh, and then our volume, of course, does need to be, <laughs> look at what I did there. My bad. I'm sure I confused some of you when I did that. That should be milliliters. Your volume needs to be in liters, and so this gets converted to, uh, now I'm getting stuck. It's very frustrating when that happens. Let me erase that real quick. Sometimes my pen just gets stuck, and it just like, I don't know, it's like it doesn't register that I've picked it up. So in uh, liters, this converts to 0, 1, 4, 4, 8 liters. All that I did was went 1, 2, 3. Bam! Um, and so now I have all the information I need to be able to solve for molar mass. So molar mass is going to be equal to mass times the gas constant times the temperature in Kelvin divided by the pressure in atmospheres and the volume in liters. So the mass was, back up here, mass of the methyl alcohol point, gosh, it's very frustrating. No, let's get rid of this, come on, you want to go away. Okay, um, so point uh, zero one four grams times point zero eight two one uh, liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin and the temperature was 372.7 Kelvin and then divide that by our pressure and we get 0 0.971 atmospheres sorry don't forget your units divided by the volume of 0 0.01448 liters and then to be canceling out some units here uh, the liters will cancel out, the atmospheres will cancel out, the Kelvin will cancel out, leaving us with grams per mole, which tells us the molar mass. And so you plug this into your nifty little calculator. 0 0.014 times 0 0.0821 times 372.7 divided by 0.971 and 0 0.01448 gives us a molar mass in correct sig figs, which actually looks like we are only allowed two sig figs of 30. It's like 30.467919. I'm guessing that repeats for a while. But so since it's 30.4, it's just 30 grams per mole. Only allowed two sig figs. So now that goes in right here. 30 grams per mole. And then for the molar mass of methyl alcohol theoretical, that's just where we do what you guys all know how to do very, very well. 
and that is uh, go to the periodic table and look up those molar masses. So this is the formula for ethanol, so we're going to take 12.01 plus 3 times 1.01 plus 16.00 plus another 1.01 .01, and that works out to 32.04, right? Yeah, 32.04 grams per mole and that goes right here, 32.04 grams per mole. And I do believe that is actually all they asked you to do on this particular um, pre-lab. So for the actual um, lab itself, please follow each step of the procedure. Read it carefully. I'm not here, so you can't ask me questions. You will be unable to call me and ask me questions because I will be unreachable at the time. Uh, definitely make sure, um, it says on step two, with pliers, pull the thin stems of each pipette so that a very fine capillary tip is formed. Really just kind of grab it with both fingers and pull. They pull into a capillary tip very, very easily. Um, and I'll have an example done for you guys so that you can see the picture that they have in both figure one and figure two in real life. Um, and it is a very, very simple setup. It's a little tedious because you have to wait for the um, liquids to all evaporate. So save yourself some time and don't get a ton of liquid. Um, and it is gonna stink, so just be ready for that. Um, but if you do have any questions, I will be available by email um, late tomorrow night. So you can email me then or you can come and see me Friday morning. So I will see you guys on Friday.